my name is Megan Avery and I have a company called Hip Stitch Academy and this is my sewing studio located in the Catskills of New York State and I teach sewing classes here, I teach sewing classes online and I make some videos of sewing projects that I really like and I wear a lot. I do have an almost 100% handmade wardrobe. I do have a few pieces that I've thrifted and I do have some pieces that I bought years ago that I still have, but most of what I wear is what I make and I want to encourage people to make their own clothes, you know, in my classes, on these videos. So that's why I like to put together videos of things that I wear a lot. So <clears throat> today's video is the Celestial Top from Pattern Fantastique. It's actually the celestial dress, um, but I wear them as top. So I have one on and it's cut off right about here. It's kind of long, you can make it shorter as long as you move your pockets up a little bit. And you could also wear it as a long dress. I just really, really like it as a top. I like anything with a yoke, I'm a huge fan of. And I think that these little sleeves, it's like practically sleeveless, but it gives you a little bit of sleeve. It does have pockets. The pattern piece for the pockets is very small, so I do use a different pocket bag pattern because I like big ones. This one still has the small ones. This is the first one I made. Um, and you can see I have one here as well. Just really, really fun sleeves, really fun yoke. And then this one, giant pockets. I am going to have to probably top stitch the pocket to the front just so it doesn't hang out while I'm wearing this one. I made this one yesterday. I'm having an issue because I actually recycled an old sheet for this one and there is zero 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 give because um, it's just woven very tightly. It's an old sheet made really well. This one I made the same size and it has enough give in the bust to make the largest size for me, at, and that was a size 16. So there's not a huge size range on this. I am gonna demonstrate in this video making a slightly larger, I'm gonna adjust the bust a little bit and just give myself a little bit more room in the bust. Although I, I like how this one works, and this was the straight up size 16. So just didn't work with this fabric. It's a little too tight because there's no give. Anyway, that's what I'm going to do today. I hope that you will get as much enjoyment out of making this top and wearing this top as I do. Or maybe you'll go nuts and make a really long version. So here's the um, pattern line drawing. And you can see it would be really gorgeous as a long dress. I just, for practical purposes, wear it as a top. So let's get started. All right, so we're gonna cut our pattern. Uh, cut our fabric out of the pattern. This is the bottom uh, dress portion. The front and back is the same. And as I mentioned, I'm making this slightly bigger. So I'm just noticing the difference between the size 14 and 16 and cutting that that much larger. I've folded the pocket in because I grabbed a pocket bag pattern from another pattern. Um, I'll have to check and see what that pattern is. Uh, so I'm I'm taking away the pattern that was built or the pocket that was built into the pattern. So now I've got a front and a back, and that was cut on the fold, <clears throat> just like it says on the pattern piece. So here's my pocket bag pattern. Here are two of them. This is not on the fold, so this is gonna end up being two separate pieces. And I need two more because you need a total of four pocket bags. Um, two pairs you want them to be mirror images so you have a left and a right I've got just enough room for all of my bodice pieces and my facing pieces and all four are on the fold I'm gonna um, kind of move some things around to get them all on the fold in this little piece of fabric that I've cut so there we go we've got the four bodice pieces um, and then that's the sleeve. We need two of those. So the fabric is doubled. So we've got that. I'm being very lazy and using scissors as my pattern weights, but these for small, these small pieces, I'm just using my hand. 
to make sure it doesn't move around too much. And I am, keep in mind, I still am cutting it slightly larger than the size 16. Okay, so it has been determined that I can't get this last facing piece on the fold. And this is a cutting trick that I use quite a bit, especially if it's a facing. I will cut two, cut it on the fold line about a half inch larger and just sew the two pieces together. This is facings that are gonna wind up on the inside of the top, so it's totally fine. So I made it work. I just, you know, I am always looking for ways to conserve fabric. So that's a pretty good trick when it comes to saving fabric. I've got the last sleeve piece right here. This is the oddest um, sleeve pattern piece I think I've ever seen, but I love it, love it, love it. How it comes out, you'll see when we sew it. Um, and that is all of the pieces for this top. All right. So now I'm laying them all out on my pinning area and I'm going to start with the front and back bodice. <clears throat> I've got the back facing up, the front facing down on it so right sides are together and I'm just sticking two pins on these little shoulder seams. You can see where it rounds down in the front. That is the head hole. And then the two other pieces are the facings and the hole on the facings is going to be exactly the same shape as the hole on the two bodice pieces above it. So same thing, sticking these two shoulder seams together on the left and then the right side with two pins. And then we're going to sew that with a half inch seam allowance. Okay, now that those shoulder seams are sewn, I am going to <clears throat> grab the iron real quick and iron open those seams just so there's not a lot of bulk on the shoulder. Sorry, it's looking a little bit blurry, but I think the blurriness clears up in a second. I don't know what happened there. And just getting some of the creases out in my fabric. So sometimes I'm lazy and skip this step, but um, it is always a good idea to iron open those shoulder seams. So now, like I said, the, um, the bodice back and front should mimic, the opening should mimic the shape of the facing back and front. And you see it's kind of perfect. And I always start by pinning the shoulder seams together and then I'll pin the rest of this sort of oblong circle all the way around um, and, and really make sure that the edges, the raw edges of the fabric line up when you go to pin them. And I've got all of the balls of the pin hanging off the side of the fabric. So they're super easy to take out in this next step when we sew this oval with a half inch seam allowance. Um, don't forget to pull your pins out as you go and don't forget to keep your ironed open shoulder seams nice and flat as you go over them. Okay, so I'm going to just stick a couple clips into the seam allowance at the curviest areas of this head hole. Maybe a couple in the front where there's a nice curve. Now, before I go ahead and tuck that in, I'm going to surge around the edge of the facing because that's going to get tucked inside. And rather than leave it a, sur a raw edge, I'm surging it. You could also turn it over uh, towards the wrong side, a half an inch and hem it so when it's inside it's hemmed but I'm just surging it there now I'm flipping the facing to the wrong side very carefully kind of making sure that 
where I sewed the facing to the bodice is right at the edge. Um, and I, I like to stick a pin in there kind of just to get it to hold where I want it to hold. And then I will go ahead and carefully press it. I don't press where the pins are because I still use plastic head pins. I suppose it wouldn't matter if you were using glass head pins, but minor plastic. So I'm just really careful to remove the pins as I press all the way around that neck hole. Just like that. And just do a little at a time and move things around until everything's, you know, there's no creases, everything's nice and flat. Okay, so I've got it all in there. It's nice and flat. I'm going to top stitch it all around that neck opening at a quarter inch seam allowance. Start from the back so that when you come back to where you started and you do a little back stitch, that is in the back and not right in the front. The other thing I find very important right here is stitching in the ditch on the shoulder seams. This is going to make the facing stay inside the top when you wear it. So I stitch on, stitch in the ditch on both shoulders and then actually in the back, <clears throat> I'm going to do about a one inch spot where I just tack back and forth so that back facing stays inside. All right, so now we have these wacky shaped sleeves. We're going to take both of the pieces and you see they're not symmetrical. So that'll come into play in a little bit of a later step, but go ahead and pin the fold the sleeve pieces in half and line up that edge and then sew that edge with a half inch seam allowance on both of those pieces. Now is the kind of fun part where you're going to open up the seam allowance, just finger press it and stick a pin, like kind of fold the whole sleeve piece wrong sides together, fold it and pin all of the raw edges together. So then the side opposite the raw edges is a folded edge and that's what's going to be the edge of the sleeve. And then the raw edges get sewn to the bodice of the dress. So just doing the same thing on the other sleeve. But keep in mind, this is where it's important to note that these are not symmetrical and I just grabbed my pattern piece to make sure I had the backs and the fronts of the sleeves correct. So once I'm done pinning that, just go ahead and find your pattern piece. And it says very clearly on the pattern piece, which is the back side of the sleeve and which is the front side of the sleeve. So you want to make sure that you have that lined up. So kind of hold the pattern piece like that onto the folded sleeve. I'm noticing that that is my back side. So the way that I have them on here currently is not correct. So I'm going to switch my sleeves. That one's gonna go on the left side and then this one's going on the right side so that the back is hitting the back of the bodice. Now you have to do a little bit of puzzle piecing to get the right side the outside of the sleeve onto the right side of the bodice. So I'm just sort of like putting the bodice inside the circle of the sleeve. Hopefully this step is clear. It's probably the trickiest uh, of the steps in the pattern instruction. So hopefully this video makes it a little bit clearer what is actually happening. And with any luck, this fits together perfectly like a little puzzle piece. And then there's going to be a portion of the sleeve that there's nothing to sew it to. And you'll eventually, um, you'll eventually, it'll hang over the bodice. So you kind of 
start on one side of the bodice, sew the sleeve to it. The sleeve's in a circle, the bodice is still flat. You'll see what I mean once you do it, um, but you don't go all the way around the sleeve. And we're gonna do this on both sides. And for both of these seams, I'm gonna run them both through the serger so we don't have the raw edges on the inside. You could also just zigzag over the edges to finish it up or use your pinking shears so it just doesn't fray as much when you go to wash this. There's not a lot to serge in this pattern, but these few things that I am serging is helpful. All right, time to put the dress part together. And don't forget about these giant pockets that we have to sew on first because they are not part of the skirt pattern. <clears throat> to know exactly where to put them, I am going to measure the pattern piece to see how far down the pocket bags were placed on the pattern piece. And I believe, um, grab that ruler, it's about nine and a half inches, I believe. So we, we measure that, just double check on your own. And then that is where I'm going to place the pocket bags on each side of the front skirt. We'll call this the front skirt. So I'm going to measure that, slide it down and just pin the edge of the pocket bag to the left side of the front skirt. Same exact things happening on the left side, I mean the right side of the front skirt, nine and a half inches down, pin it on, and then with a half inch or even a little bit less than a half inch, maybe more like a quarter of an inch seam allowance, sew those pocket bags to the left and right side of your skirt front. All right, so go ahead and just literally repeat the same thing. This is the skirt back. Everything is exactly the same size. Whatever distance you pinned the pocket bag on the front, do the same exact thing on the back and sew those on. Now we'll put the front and back skirts together, right sides facing, starting at the top, right side, start pinning the rajas together. Make sure you pin around the pocket bags, 
so that the raw edges line up nice and all the way around and then to the bottom of the skirt. We're going to go ahead and sew each of those sides with a half inch seam allowance. Really take, make a conscious curve, uh, turn even when you get to the top of the pocket bag and then the bottom of the pocket bag. Um, so you have nice crisp corners on your pockets and then do exactly the same thing. So we're just going to get to the pocket, pivot, go around that pocket. And then we're not going to pivot until we get back onto the skirt part. So I'm back on the skirt, pivot, and finish it up. So that's our pockets. And then you can serge that or zigzag that um, after you've clipped, like I'm doing here. Just to clip into those corners gives it a little bit more flexibility. Doesn't pucker up so much when you turn it right side out. Go ahead and turn the whole thing right side out. Your pockets should stay right inside. And then I usually just kind of press with my iron on both of the pockets, but it's looking like <laughs> the skirt of a top or the skirt of a dress. You can see how this could be a dress if it were just longer. And there are our nice big pockets. So now all we've got left is sewing the bodice to the skirt part of the top. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to kind of see, okay, fine, that's going to fit in there beautifully. But the way we want to pin it together is by actually turning the bodice inside out and sticking the skirt inside. And then I want you to pin the side seam of the skirt to the side seam of the bodice on the left side. Then do the same thing on the right side. Do those two things first, and then find your centers and kind of pin the rest of the way around. So then this way, if it's not perfectly the same length, you can kind of ease it together like I've just done. Flip it over, do the same thing. Pin all the way around, pin the centers together, and now you will sew the bodice to the skirt of this celestial top that we're making. All right. So over at the sewing machine, we're going to use a half inch seam allowance and sew all the way around. Okay, last but not least, we gotta hem this baby. So I'm just using the iron, I'm turning it up towards the wrong side, a half an inch, all the way around, using the iron to crease it until I get back to where I started. 
perfect. Same thing, same amount of fabric is being folded. Work your way all the way around. Don't burn yourself. Using a quarter inch seam allowance, bring it over to the sewing machine and top stitch along the folded, the top folded edge. So really close, close to the top of the hem, not the bottom of the actual top. All the way around. I always start at the back, finish at the back. And oh my goodness, I think that is the last step. Congratulations. Hopefully you followed along and you've made your own celestial top or dress with me. If you have any questions, you know where to find me. Um, I love this pattern and I live in it in the summer and I'm excited to have another one. Yay!